All right, hi everybody. This is Andy from UnleashedStrengths.com with episode two of Thematics, featuring our guest today, Mr. Ryan Wells. Ryan, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us your top five, and then we'll get right into the meat of the interview. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andy. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, be on your show today. Um, first of all, again, my name is Ryan Wells, and I'm right here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. My top five are woo, communication, futuristic, adaptability, and connectedness. Wow, that's awesome. You and I share three. I have woo, communication, and futuristic in my top five, so that's pretty neat. Uh, woo number one, I always love when I see that. I always want to be looking over the person's shoulder when they're taking the assessment. My, my woo sits number three, but uh, that's, that's really cool. So tell us a little bit, now that we know your top five, tell us a little bit about uh, you know, who introduced you to StrengthsFinder and why? Yeah, so um, I had a realtor friend, uh, she's a real estate agent, who had told me about this woman named Rhonda Boyle. Mm. And uh, she said, hey, you need to meet Rhonda. Uh, she's a connector. And, you know, at the time I was trying to network and, and kind of get my name out there for our business. And I said, sure, sure, let's meet up. So we met up at a Panera Bread. And uh, to be honest with you, when I first met Rhonda, uh, she kind of kind of freaked me out a little bit because all <laughs> she talked about was this thing called Strengths Finder, and uh, you know she she explained what it was and what it wasn't. Uh, you know that it she said it, it wasn't a personality profile like I was familiar with, and you know I was very skeptical because I'm I'm pretty good at cheating. You know those kind of tests. If if I want you to think that, uh, you know if I want you to think that I'm good working with my hands then I'll answer the questions that way, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I put her off for a good couple of months, and then finally I gave in and uh, got my top five and was blown away that finally I had a, a name to put with uh, things that I already knew about myself, and then I immediately enrolled in a workshop that she put on. So um, I owe a lot to Rhonda Boyle for uh, helping me to discover uh, my own strengths. Yeah, Rhonda's great. I mean, for episode two, she was our guest on episode one, and she is uh, nothing short of probably the most uh, vibrant and energetic person that I've ever met through this strength circle. I mean, she definitely is in it to help people embrace the concept of their strengths development and just better their lives. So when you said when you said you got your top five and you were blown away, can you kind of give us a little bit more detail on what you mean by blown away? Yeah, I think um, more than just the names of the strengths and the talents that, that were given to me, um, it was it was the concept of having permission to not worry so much about the things that I'm weak at, but uh, to to operate to lead even from my strengths. And so I think that more than anything was uh, kind of that aha moment, the eye opener, if you will, of you know I knew that I had the ability to you know meet new people. Um, and, and I enjoyed that, but you know, I didn't know Wu was the name of it. And so, just kind of hearing that term Wu uh, anywhere that I, you know, walk now, it's almost like I've got this laser beam out that I'm Wu, you know, <laughs> just wooing people. And uh, yeah. and so it, it's just cool knowing that I have that tool in my tool belt. Yeah, I, I love the sound effects, and that kind of leads into my second question. Um, since that day where your top five was revealed, maybe can you just give us a little bit of an insight to an average day in your strengths journey? I mean, you said uh, you talked about the woo, but maybe tap into some of your other uh, themes that you have and talk about how those things kind of come to life throughout your everyday adventure, both as an entrepreneur and um, just maybe within your family life. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe just a little bit of background so we can relate. Um, uh, you know, last year, uh, really, but it's probably been a little over that a year and a half ago or so. Um, I was at a place in my life, in my marriage, even that you know we were broke, uh, we weren't happy, we had three kids. Uh, you know, let me just put it this way: uh, my car was about to go back to First Capital, my truck was going to go back to First Union, my house was going to go back to First Federal, and that meant me and my wife were going to go back to First Base. You know what I mean? And so, I mean that. That is rock bottom in some ways, and so I was looking and uh, trying to find, you know, uh, an opportunity. Um, that's when, just kind of through a series of events, um, I started uh, taking photos of houses for real estate agents, and started a little company here called Oklahoma Real Estate Photography. And um, you know, we shot houses, you know, maybe two or three a week, something like that, for a while. But it definitely wasn't anything that was going to pay the bills. Uh, and that's whenever I discovered. Uh, Rhonda Boyle and, and Strengths Finder. Um, when when I 
started getting the coaching emails and, and having discussions with Rhonda and going through the workshop to develop the strengths, uh, I realized that my top five working together uh, really helped to develop a strategy for me to kind of go out into the marketplace and begin to add value. Uh, the real hinge, I guess, that everything uh, that everything swings upon uh, in this story is when I learned that those talents and those strengths weren't just for me, but I, I was supposed to serve other people using those. And so, for instance, um, you know, with futuristic, I'm able to dream about the future. I'm able to see things um, almost in advance and kind of know how, uh, you know, with that futuristic and adaptability working together, I'm able to navigate things even before they happen, you know, almost like Spider-Man, it feels like, right? Yeah. The cognition. I mean, it almost feels that way. And so, um, you know, another big thing for me was uh, kind of exploring my connectedness. And, uh, you know, I know maybe at, at its most extreme level, uh, you know, a person might feel like they're connected even, you know, to the earth itself. And I'll be honest, you know, whenever I, when I had that revelation, um, very weird, strange kind of things started happening where uh, just coincidental things, like uh, I had a, a real estate agent who, who said, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this house to shoot. And by the way, it's uh, the uh, guitar player from this popular band that's mm. uh, right out of Oklahoma here. And what's very weird about that's the day before I visited that band member's art gallery. You know, oh, wow. it was just so odd. And then and those photos from that particular house when I when I posted them just out into the social world, uh, and I and I tagged the realtor. That was like the door that opened me up to a whole new office of real estate agents, of which now you know I mean we're we're sitting at, at this point uh, about you know 130 clients uh, that we serve on a regular basis. Wow, that's that's impressive, and I like how you refer to your themes working together. I mean, I think that's that's a big part of this. I mean, we're talking about sure you have your top five, and and when we discussed with episode one with Rhonda is what she's been able to do is is help you kind of acknowledge those top five and see how they're working together. And I love when you said that you know you're not only going to use those top five to better your own life, but you're going to use those to serve others. And I think that's a huge insight that a lot of people miss. I mean, this is this is not – for Strengths Finder is not a self-help tool. I like to call it a self-activation tool. Um, but it is – revealing all these talents, you would be completely selfish if you were just to keep them to yourself. You know what I mean? That's so I love that you're out there you know, talking about strengths and letting people know what you have to offer. And obviously, it's created a, a boom in your business. And you and I share a lot of similarities in that aspect because um, when I was at my lowest point – we were all. I was right there, right where you were. I mean, everything was about to get repoed, and and uh, I went to a mentor of mine who gave me Strengths Finder, and he said, "Are you living a life in line with your strengths?" And I said, "Dude, I don't know what you're talking about. I took the assessment. It's in my drawer. I really didn't do anything with it." But he acted kind of as my coach at the time, and and really pushed me to to look at those top five and to figure out how they can work together to make me an overall better person. So that's an awesome story. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so yeah, a lot of the questions I had, man, you already drilled into. But uh, so we'll talk about your business for a second. To talk, a lot of people want to know. Strengths Finder is really big in the executive coaching and within business. We talk about team development, um, but you know, I think it's just as equally huge in my personal development. But how do you use your strengths? We talked about the networking stuff, but so as a photographer, um, you're going into a house and you're kind of solo one-on-one. -on -one. So what are you using as far as your strengths goes to help you do that? I mean, your woo gets you connected with the realtors, but what else? Tell us about a little bit more how your strengths help you get more clients and more, uh, you know, shooting gigs. Yeah, I think uh, it really, it goes back to, uh, I, I heard this quote one time that said that there's nothing personal about personal development. Because, you know, when you improve yourself, it affects everyone around you. And um, I think just the excitement that this, that uh, you know knowing my strengths, what that brought to my life, uh, is contagious. And so you know when I'm going, kind of the way that my business works is a real estate agent will call me, say you know hey I have this listing coming up, and I want you to photograph it. And so I'll usually meet them there, and uh, you know we're both inside of a house, and they're telling me about the home while I'm taking pictures. And that that interaction right there, uh, you know it's more than just uh, you know a, a photographic experience, you know. But it's it's really um, it, it, it's it's transcendental in some ways. You know, it's a, a bonding, a 
whatever you want to call it, but they, you know, I build a rapport with them at that time. We become friends. I mean, you know, there are uh, agents that I hang out with as buddies now, uh, you know, just by doing that right there. And, uh, th and that's kind of the message that I'm preaching all over the place is that, you know what, your business is not just about what you do, but it's about the experience that you provide for your clients, for the end user. And that's really what sells right now, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, our, our photos are, are great. I mean, we, you know, we get rave reviews and things about the photos, but um, even beyond that, you know, uh, people have told me things, this is kind of crazy, but uh, they've told me things like, you know, Ryan, I don't know what it is, but there's something on you that makes these houses sell, you know, and I'll, I'll see the photos that I've done, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, they're good photos, but, I mean, come on, you know, and there are situations to where, you know, I'll, I'll go to a house and, uh, I'll have the photos done, and then like a couple of hours later, before I've even had time to edit and send the photos to the realtor, that the homes are selling. And nice. I don't, I don't know that there's anything there per se, but that's the reputation that's kind of gone before me. And all of that really, I would, I would say, has to do with that interaction that I have with those real estate agents on that in that one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah. No, you, you hit the nail on the head, man. I always. Uh... I have a marketing business alongside with my coaching business and one of the things they always say is before you can market your business you have to market yourself and I'm a firm believer that in 2014 just like you said that that initial bond that friendship that you make with the client is what keeps them coming back for more yeah. it's not you know you're gonna put out a quality end product people know that I mean you're you're invested in your business so the the product you give them is going to be quality but it's that extra stuff that you give them that connectedness that friendship um, that you know, extended handshake, that willingness to make right if something doesn't go wrong, or in your case, maybe to reschedule if something doesn't work out. Absolutely. So you're you're right, man. I I think I mean you can see over my shoulder my collection of books that I have, and I've I'm an avid reader of self help books, but for so long I was reading the self help books and they weren't doing anything for me, you know, until I was given this book right here. And I think you and I are very very similar in that we and I always with my woo I always kind of throttled back a little bit. Um, yeah. Because I was always told, you know, don't get involved in things that you you don't need to get involved in. And I'd always had this burning desire to kind of say, I know I can help that person. I know I can. In their my marketing business, I started because I knew people were trying to pitch a business, but they didn't know how to do it effectively. And I brought my woo and my communication and and told them how to do it to a point where people were actually receiving their message, digesting it, and understanding what that person was selling, and then sales went up. So. It's uh yeah it's that's that's really cool. Thanks again for sharing that story because I just love when I hear that people have massive amounts of success when they actually, you know, take a hold of the reins of their life, take a hold of their strengths, and actually put them to good use. Let me uh, let me sh maybe quantify uh, kind of the success for you. I mean, if uh, if you've got absolutely, a, um, and I mean, this is you know even looking back just uh you know from a numbers perspective, it still blows my mind because you know it all turned around. When I when I took the assessment and began to uh, you know to work on developing those strengths and uh, just go backwards here it was uh, December of last year 2013 that I took the assessment and the workshop and uh, at that time I we were doing I don't know 15 houses a month uh, something like that the by the month of January we had upped that number to to uh, 22 which you know is is decent. Uh, hold on, it seems like I've lost you here. Okay, got you back. Hold on, let me start over. There we go. My screen. No, go ahead. We're still going. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, let me kind of start over there, though. So, to quantify the success that, that we've seen since uh, taking the assessment, developing our strengths, uh, it was December of this last year. We were averaging about 15 houses a month or so, which was which was decent. You know, it uh, certainly replaced some of the part-time income that I had before. And uh, by January, we were up to 22, and I, I thought, man, that's great. And then it was in January whenever I had that revelation that, you know what, this is really not about me at all, but it's about how can I serve more people and serve them well using my strengths and not worried about, you know, I'm an unorganized person. Okay, that's, that's fine. And I was always, you know, so freaked out that, that I wasn't analytical, you know, or uh, I wasn't deliberative. Uh, but when I realized... You know what? I'm adapt. I'm adaptability, and I'm a dreamer, man. I I have futuristic, and I started thinking that way, uh, and I started applying myself by using the woo to schedule myself with someone brand new every single day that I'd never met before, 
and doors just begin to fling wide open to where we doubled the business from January to February. We went from 22 up to 20 or to 44, and then from there it just skyrocketed to. Let me just share this: within the past 60 days, we've done 180 homes. 180, wow. like we're right at like 90 a month right now. And uh, I'm talking, you know, like all day, every day, as much as I want to work, I can. I've, you know, this week, actually today, I had to turn down three different realtors because I just don't have the, I don't have the bandwidth. And so, you know, today we hired our very first employee. Uh, my wife had worked a full-time job for eight and a half, almost nine years. And uh, we got so busy that in May, uh, she came home from her, her full-time job. We've completely replaced her income above and beyond. And we're at the point now where we can, you know, bless other people, uh, you know, to bless their life. And, and we brought this photographer on, and it was cool um, in the conversation that I had with her today at the restaurant while we were talking to her. Uh, I said, you know, I only have really one requirement for you to come on board. It's uh, that you take the Strengths Finder assessment and go to a workshop. And so she's already taken it. I've got her top five, and she signed up for a workshop with Rhonda. Well, let's talk about that for a second. That's a great lead into my next question. What was her reaction when you? I mean, say she was completely ignorant to the Strengths Finder uh, and Strengths Based Development. What was her reaction when you asked her to do that? Well, I sort of prefaced it with her by telling her our, my story. You know that it, it mm -hmm. literally changed my life and transformed my business. And so at that point, you know, of course, when I had that woo going, it drew her in anyway. But you know, she she was excited. Uh, she was excited to hear. You know, because uh, she put it this way. She said other people have told her that she is good at certain things, but she's never seen that herself. And, you know, yeah, for, she said if there was a way that, that she could, you know, take something and have it in front of her, and it wasn't someone else's word, but, it, you know, it's something that was revealed by questions that she answered, that it would change the game. And, uh, you know, uh, I could just see the excitement in her face. That's the thing there. Right there, man, that's the key is it provides you with a language. It provides you with some terminology. Um, this, everybody is from the time they're, you know, they can start retaining memories and thinking about how they interact in certain situations. They can see their talents and other people may tell them, but until you can actually see it written out with a description and, and take ownership of it, that's why I love, you know, Gallup has the the name it, claim it, aim it, where you basically got to name their strength and say, I have this. Yes, you're, then you claim it and take ownership of it, and then you aim it, and you figure out how to put it into action. And that's what you did with your woo by making those calls to those realtors and opening up those doors. And I think it's so cool that you got your first employee interested in Strength Finder, and she already has potential for an aha moment with her first workshop with Rhonda. So that's that's so cool, man. I keep that going. Obviously, you're a big fan of strengths, but integrate it in your business. And I, I meet with a lot of managers and they're hesitant because, well, they're hesitant for a couple reasons. Like Rhonda mentioned, I think you mentioned when you first met her, is people are going to say, oh, this is just another assessment. I took 20 yeah. assessments. I'm a monkey. I'm blue. I'm in this quadrant or whatever they do. But this isn't like that. This is a game changer. Oh, yeah. What do you think? What do you think about that? Do you think this is uh, similar to any other assessment you ever took? Not at all. You know, I, I don't think this is similar to. I, and I have I've taken personality profiles. Um, you know, I also uh, am involved in church work, and so I've taken spiritual gifts tests. And you know, to me, everything that I've ever taken, they're all they're all the same. Uh, they're I would say they're easy to manipulate in some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I said, I if I want you to think that I'm a well-organized person that I'm going to answer the questions that way, right? What I loved about Strengths Finder is uh, I didn't know where the questions were going. You know, I, I had no idea, and you had to answer them quick. And so it was really that instinct answer. Um, and of course, I approached it with, uh, you know, an honesty maybe that I'd never done before, just because of where I was at in my life. I was ready for a breakthrough. I was ready for something to finally change. And and so I approached it with, you know, what I'm going to approach this with authenticity, and I answered the questions that way. Um, I'll tell you something that also has helped just in my personal life with that is, uh, you know, my wife, I, after I'd taken the, uh, the workshop, I come home and I, I said, you know, Aaron, you have to take this assessment. So she took it, and what we found were uh, that we were on uh, opposite ends of the spectrum of the themes. And, you know, how, how great is that, that we complement each other? And, uh, you know, just some personality profile is not going to show that, you know. It took, it took Strings Finder, and, uh, you know, 
we, we say it all the time as we're driving around because, hey, we work together. Uh, you know, we'll just look at each other and, and, and say, you know what, I've never been this happy before. And I owe a lot of it to that, to uh, Strengths Finder. Yeah, man, I'm glad you brought that up. You guys, we should hang out. We, we're two peas in a pod, man. I tell you what, because my wife is the exact same way. We're, again, two opposite ends of the spectrum. And where I have my woo futuristic communication, she's empathy, connectedness. I mean, but again, it's it's that that pairing of those themes and you know like they say you oh, individual doesn't have to be well-rounded but a team really should be well-rounded my wife and I are the same thing we're in a professional and personal relationship and we're your team and where I falter she's there to pick up the pieces because she knows there are certain things that are you know lean into my lesser talents that she can really excel at so that's great man I'm glad you're you're not only applying strengths to your business but also into your into your marriage um, so what advice, the whole concept of thematics is to give solid uh, insights into what StrengthsFinder is to people who are just taking the assessment. People like you and I who just took the assessment and we're looking at our top five and we're, we're saying, now what? So let's, let's jump in, uh, let's jump a little bit, in, let's hop in the, um, the DeLorean real quick and head back uh, and let's think about when you first took that assessment what was going through your mind and what advice would you give to somebody who maybe just took the assessment and now they're saying to themselves, okay, now what? What would you answer? How would you answer that? Right. And, and I wonder if, you know, maybe there are certain themes that lend themselves to being able just to jump right in like I did. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with my wife, it, I, I think there were maybe some apprehension, you know, just uh, she was curious of, of how it was all going to play out. Uh, I would say... The best thing for you to do is one, you know, study one strength at a time, and like you you were talking about, kind of the three steps. Um, you know, identify the one strength, and you know, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I'm I'm fumbling over this one. You're gonna have to edit this one out. No, no, there's this shows this. There's no editing, my friend. You're good to go. But you're right. It's it's. It's uh, one strength at a time because if you give somebody their action report and you, they have their top five and they have a block of text underneath each theme and yeah. they try to take all five and they try to just cram in their life right away, it's like putting a you know square peg in a round hole. It's just not going to work. Right. So I think well, you're not fumbling over everything, man. You actually made a very, very solid point that people often miss. This is baby steps. We're talking about it's called strengths-based development. Yeah, okay, yeah. it's not it's, it's not going to happen right away. So you're right. First step that I would tell somebody, and I and I completely agree with you, is find one, grab a hold of it, claim it, take ownership of it, and then figure out how you're going to apply it into your life. Yeah. What do you think? That's that sound pretty good or what? That's yeah. That's just along the lines of uh, I think the best way to do it, and it's an ever evolving thing. You know, I mean, from day to day. Uh, I, I tend to forget a little bit about my uh, connectedness um, until mm -hmm. you know something happens where I, I'm like, oh wow, okay, I can see that those events are connected. Um, I think for me, just having to remind myself of that all the time, and, and the way that I do that is I'll go back and I'll look over notes that I took during the workshop. Uh, you know, I'll have conversations with people because I've I've kind of spread this you know message far and wide. Uh, even even at our church with our uh, with our volunteer staff, uh, you know I've I've had them uh, quite a few of them take the assessment and just having that conversation with them, uh, you know maybe identifying some of the ones that we have in, in common has helped me to continue to develop mine. Uh, you know I think the best way for you to learn is to teach others, and uh, that's that's really what I've tried to do, and it's uh, it's been a benefit. Yeah, so I think I mean, we can come to a consensus that somebody takes the assessment for the first time. Uh, step one is to just kind of take ownership of one theme and figure out how you're going to apply that. And then step two is just to surround yourself with people who are also interested in StrengthsFinder and also interested in their personal growth and development and are willing to kind of maybe – uh, be that guiding force that pushes you a little forward if you if you tend to forget what you're good at. So, um, you know, and I think that's huge. Here, I, my, my office, I run an office space in the Clinton Area Chamber of Commerce, and everybody here is very strengths aware, and it helps. It helps in my development, and it helps within my business because 
you need somebody to tell you, hey man, your your woo is on fire at that networking event, or hey man, your communication did. I could tell you were really uh, digging deep and harnessing that strength and that talent because you were able to convey a message in easily understood terms. Good job. And that's the type of stuff we need. We need others to acknowledge our strengths and kind of let us know. But now that we have Strengths Finder and we have the 34 themes, we can apply those words and then in that language. So now it's really easy for us to understand and take ownership of. I agree. Yep. So uh, we save this for last, you know, because this sometimes uh, gets people thinking a little bit. But out of your top five, and, and the, I mean, they're all kind of, they all interweave. But let's say you had to pick one and say that's my favorite. What would it be and why? Oh, yeah. I mean, hands down, it's woo. Hands down. Uh, you know, I always got in trouble in school for being the guy that talked to everyone. Uh, it's, it's pretty funny. I, I remember, you know, teachers saying, Ryan, your voice carries, you know. And... Uh, I've always been able to just hit it off with people uh, right from the get-go, you know, whenever I first meet them. And it was so cool having a name to put with that. And so now I just, on purpose, you know, just turn it on anywhere that I go. Um, and it's, it's amazing the, the places that I've been and the people that I've been able to stand and speak in front of just because I was able to win them over. You know, it, I mean, it's it's kind of gotten me in trouble, you know, a couple of times because, like, once I got to the place, I really wasn't qualified, you know, uh, to be there necessarily. At least I didn't feel like that. But my woo got me there, and somehow I was able to wing it the rest of the time, I guess, adaptability. But, uh, yeah, woo's for sure my favorite one. Yeah, that's awesome. And then this is something that I felt, maybe you felt the same thing. Even though I always had woo, acknowledging it gave me more confidence I was able to kind of square my shoulders up, and I wasn't so nervous about meeting new people. Because even people with woo, every once in a while, you still get that feeling in the pit of your stomach when you meet a new yeah. group of people. Or, but now that I acknowledge it, and I'm able to put, slap a label on it, and and I've I've harnessed the power of that theme, I feel more confident. What about you? Did that happen when you when you acknowledge that you had woo? Yeah, I mean, it really did. You know, uh, there is always that fear. I think, you know, with Wu, the idea is that you're, you know, winning others over, but what happens if, you know, if you don't win them, you know, if they put up resistance and, and you know, they, they hate you, they don't like you. I mean, kind of that's my motivation all the time is I really do want people to like me all the time. And so uh, knowing that that was a talent that I had that other people didn't have, that was huge because it said, hey, that's special to me. And well, I can walk into any situation with a new confidence just because there was a name put on what I knew I already had. Yeah, it's amazing how the human brain and the psyche works when you when you can put a name to something and it just kind of opens up new doors and allows you to explain things better. And that's that's why, man, I I love strengths forever. I don't think there'll ever be anything that comes around that's that's more simple, um, yeah. easy to understand, and easy to apply than, than this assessment. So, uh, last question, looking back. And we'll say, Ryan, uh, we'll say, looking back, and you never, strengths was never introduced in your life, and we'll flash forward. How do you think your life would be different? I know you said you fell in some hard times financially with your marriage. So you described what would what was great about finding strengths. But let's just talk about kind of if this didn't, if this didn't come into your life, where do you think you would be? I, I would still be, you know, the selfish person that I was before. Um, when When all you do is concern yourself with, things that you need to improve on, it prevents you from being focused on the needs of other people. Yeah. And, you know, there's something to be said about uh, a principle even like sowing and reaping. You know, when you give, it'll be given back to you. Uh, you know, it, the, the more you make happen for others, the more doors will open for you. And those are things that I had always heard on, you know, self-help CDs and MP3s and books and podcasts and everything before, but um, I never I never looked at it in a way like I did whenever I was introduced to Strengths Finder. Um, whenever you know and can be confident in your strengths and you know that that is the avenue that you should be driving down, that's what you should be operating from, no longer are you worried about what am I doing wrong, how can I improve, how can I get better at those things that I'm terrible at. Um, all of a sudden the focus isn't on you anymore because your strengths, your talents are things that are natural. You don't have to think about them. Just like driving a car, I don't have to think anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now I don't have to think about 
uh, how I live my life. I don't have to think about how I run my business. I just I do it naturally, and as a result, my focus is not here anymore. But it, it can be on on clients, on my family. Uh, it can be on everything other than me. And so I think where I would be uh, is I would I would still be back there trying to figure out how to how to develop a, a you know a schedule, um, how to manage my you know my finances. Uh, which I mean, those things are important. But what Strengths Finder taught me is, you know, I don't have to be well-rounded, like you mentioned before. I, I can find people that are strong in those areas and employ them to help out, you know. And so I, I know that we would have not seen the stratospheric success that we've seen if it if it hadn't been for Strengths Finder. Yeah. No, that's and that's a that's a common answer. So I mean, there's one of these things where you say, um, you know, somebody says to me, "Prove it. Prove that it works." Start asking people. I've taken the assessment. There's your proof. I mean, what do you yeah. want? I mean, if you're deep in analytical and you want some numbers and stuff, we can get that stuff for you. But if you really want to know the proof, you really want to see an example of the fact that this actually, you know, this book has changed lives. Just start asking people, and that's why we created this thematics thing. I mean, this was just kind of an idea because. I thought, how am I going to get the word out about strengths? And every time I had a conversation with somebody on the phone, I was like, God, I get off the phone. I'm like, I'm pumped. I'm yeah. pumped about this. I'm pumped about Strengths Finder. And I thought, well, let's just ditch the phone and do it via webcam. That way, other people can get as pumped as I am. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, Ryan, that's you did a, a very, very good job conveying your story, and I thank you for all the information that you were willing to share with us. Um, but you know, one of the things about thematics is we always give our guests an opportunity, really, to kind of not only talk about strengths, but if you know, also talk about their business. And 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 if you want to go ahead and talk a little bit about that, in case there's some people that are realtors that are listening to this in the Oklahoma City area, and there's some information that they want to get from you, and they're interested not only in in what you have to offer professionally, but maybe they're interested in chewing on your ear about Strengths Finder. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think our, our number one goal that just drives me daily is I take a look at, um, let me let me back up and, and say it this way, uh, we were in a very bad place financially not too long ago and uh, I'll never forget uh, when, when we, my wife and I bought our first house. Uh, when I grew up, we never owned a home. We rented. Uh, we moved around a lot and, you know, there were always rooms that had boxes that were unpacked and so I won't forget the feeling that I had when I walked into this empty house that I'm sitting in right now that that was mine, but we had bought a home, and it was a dream come true. And so that is what drives us daily is that, that the home ownership process, the idea of buying a home is a dream come true. And what just nags me is when I hear someone say, you need to go and look at this house because the photos just don't do it justice. Mm. My response is, why not? Why do the photos not do it justice? Because we can do that house justice. We can portray it in the best light possible. And um, that is, again, that's what drives us. And so we've, uh, we've decided that our motto is going to be we're going to change the culture of real estate marketing in the Oklahoma City area, at least starting right here in this market. And so, uh, you know, to any real estate agents that are out there that maybe this message resonates with you, uh, I would encourage you, you know, to join our tribe. Uh, you know, go first of all to our website, okrealestatephotography.com, uh, and that's okay. That's a landing page. But even beyond that, I want you to friend me personally on Facebook, Ryan Wells, out of Oklahoma City here, and also our uh, like our Facebook page uh, at OK Real Estate Photography, uh, because I found that more that I open up my life to others. Uh, you know, the greater our business does, the greater theirs does. You know, I think that, um, you know, we're, we are, we're the human race. You know, we're not individual humans. We are all connected in many ways. And so uh, I would love Mr. and Mrs. Realtor out there, I'd love to uh, buy you coffee, steak, breakfast, brunch, dinner, or anything in between and just to hear your story and see how I might be able to communicate that out to the world and drum up some business for you. Yeah, very well put, my friend. And then you can go ahead and he'll buy you a coffee and maybe a copy of Strength Finder as a consolation. Right. There you go. So, all right. Well, it's been my pleasure, Ryan Wells, to have you on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, you're very, very insightful and uh, very well spoken. Thank you again for joining us. And uh, if you have nothing else to include here, we'll go ahead and close up the broadcast. But thanks again for being on. Thanks for having me.